Um, today we'll be talking about the city and sustainability. But first, let me tell you just a little bit about Stefano Boetti. He is an architect uh, trained in Milan and Venice, but he is really a Renaissance man. He's, he is a teacher, a writer, a curator. Um, he's part of the scientific board of an innovation center. He directs a future cities lab. He's been in politics as a counselor of art in Milan. He also has led magazines such as Domus and Abitare, and I could go on and on. One of the uh, most prominent ideas that has had an echo all around the world was the vertical forest that you built, the housing in Milan. And this was a private development. Now, this was one approach, and how did you get the idea? How did you convince the developer to do this? And what were some of your goals in the vertical forest, Stefano? Thank you, Marta, first of all, and it's such a pleasure to have this dialogue with you. Well, uh, it was basically 12, 13 years ago, I met uh, Jeremy Hines, together with the Italian CEO of Hines, Manfredi Catella, and they were asking me to, to, to propose a high-rise residential tower uh, in, the, in the center of Milano. And uh, when I uh, suggested them uh, this idea to develop uh, a kind of new uh, generation of, of high-rise building where, where, let's say, living nature and architecture could met together, at the beginning they were honestly extremely skeptical. And uh, uh, when we come back after two, three months of, of the search, because I had to gather uh, structural engineers, uh, botanists, uh, ethologists, just to, to just to try to, to let's say verify all the different character of this uh, uh, of this uh, building. Uh, and when we came back with the answer, they say, "Well, let's start, uh, let's do, and let's try." The role of the plants on the building is. Uh, just for reducing CO2, biodiversity, insulation. What does it do? No, I, I, plants are, well, plants in an urban condition, an urban environment are capable to, let's say, produce uh, several advantages. So the first is for sure related with CO2. We basically know that uh, cities are producing the 70, 75% of the CO2, which is present in our atmosphere. And we know that the other side, the forest and woodland are absorbing the 30% of that CO2. So uh, if we can uh, move trees and forests inside the cities, well, we are in a certain way trying to fight the enemy in its own field. And uh, it's one of the most efficient uh, economic and let's say inclusive way to tackle uh, climate change uh, and slow down climate change in an urban environment. So Stefano, tell me, uh, there are a lot of people that talk about technology in the city. Um, how do you feel about technology or perhaps what are the important factors to make cities sustainable? For sure we have other, uh, let's say, uh, innovations that we have to promote. One is connected with mobility, for instance. So we know very well how mobility has uh, acquired, absorbed uh, some uh, amazing new technology in the, in the next uh, past and how we can imagine to develop, just think to how the, also the economy of sharing is going to change, is changing the way we are conceiving our private mobility inside an environment. Uh, then we enter in another very important dimension, which is the one that's somewhere connected with the idea of a smart city. So how we can imagine that a, a city who is uh, really capable to, to deal with climate change can make this a fourth uh, democratic. And in all of this, Stefano, you're an architect. What is the role of architects in, in creating the sustainable city? Architects seeing themselves more as city makers as opposed to uh, building makers or object makers. So what I, I, I believe is that uh, our profession is uh, it's really great and uh, passionate. And it has two, two main dimensions that it has to develop together. One is about uh, 
inclusion. We have, if we want to anticipate the future of environment of, uh, let's say, inhabited space, as we have to do, we have always, always to take in consideration a multitude of uh, possible inspiration. We have to open the future, to have to, let's say, confront uh, different uh, possibilities about the future. And to do that, we have to be influenced by the art field, by the science, by different technologies, by human discipline, and so on. So, and then it's, a, it's about inclusion, it's about to be open. Stefano, we've all shared uh, our screens over the past months and all our communication has really been through digital media. Um, I'm looking forward to the future and I'm hoping that our interaction with physical space, our connection being physically with other people will become even more important. How do you see the future as a result of COVID? Uh, if we uh, pay attention to the let's say, the, the reasons of, and also the origin of this uh, uh, virus, uh, we start to consider and to see how is this COVID pandemic uh, sudden event is strictly, strongly connected with other uh, crises, with the climate crisis, for sure, uh, with the economical crisis, and uh, we, I think now are in condition to observe how also this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sudden uh, accident is part of a long, long-term process of transformation. The use of roofs will become extremely important in the future because roofs are open, outdoor space, outer space, but probably they will become also a kind of fifth facade where we will receive goods and merchandise through the drones. So, but I believe in roofs also from another point of view. I think that roofs could play in the future the role that courtyards were playing in European city in the 19 or in the 80, where let's say semi-public places where you can work, meet your, your, your friends, uh, your family members, and also develop uh, small agricultural activities. It's a uh, roof will be extremely important. Matt. If you're looking to new companies or to startups who want to enter the picture of cities and sustainability, what advice would you give to them? So I, I believe we have to, to develop the, our, uh, let's say, creativity, uh, keeping these two issues uh, one close to the other. Climate change, global warming, poverty, and uh, the necessity to adapt our city, to update them, to host this uh, probably wave of poverty. Stefano, uh, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, it's an inspiration, and not only an inspiration through your words, but I know uh, what you believe and what you say is what you practice, whether it's in your architecture or teaching or curation. Thank you so much for Thank being you, with us. It's been a pleasure, and I can't wait for our next conversation. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh.